Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 5. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 13 of Book 5. Before we begin, I'd like to recap Definition 7. Now, Definition 7 defines what it means for one ratio to be larger than another. So if we have two ratios made up of magnitudes A, B, C, and D, if it is possible to find two integers, n and m, such that n is n times a would be greater than n times b, and n times c would be less than or equal to m times d, if we can find two integers to satisfy these two equations, then that defines that a to b is larger than c to d. So again, this is a definition. A quick example, if we're comparing the ratio 80 to 75, comparing it to the ratio 160, 2 times 80 is greater than 4 times 75, yet 2 times 100 is less than 4 times 60. Therefore, the ratio 80 to 75 is greater than the ratio 100 to 60. So, let's begin this proposition. If we have three ratios, a to b, c to d, which are equal, and c to d compared to e to f, c to d is greater than e to f, then we also have that the ratio a to b is also greater than e to f. And here are our initial conditions. Now, because c to d is greater than e to f, then there exists two numbers two numbers, two integers, such that if C and E have equal multiples and D and F have equal multiple, then M to C would be greater than N to D, and M of E would be less than N times F. These two conditions are true because of the definition of what it means for one ratio to be larger than the other, given the appropriate M and N. Well, let's assume that we found M and N. Now we make G and H to be equal multiples of C and E. And we create a new multiple of equal multiple K and L of D and F such that G would be greater than K and H would be less than L. Now remember, this is doable because of the definition of C to D being greater than E to F, we know that we can come up with four lines such that these conditions are true and they are equal multiples of the antecedents and consequence. So again, we have created these lines to have these conditions. Now let's take two new lines, M and N, such that M is the same multiple of A as G is of C, and N is the same multiple of B as K is of D, and L is of N. So in other words, you can see we're using M, multiples of M's, and multiples of N's. So M, G, and H, in this example, are twice A, C, and E. N, K, and L are three times B, D, and F. And G is larger than K, and H is less than L. Well, AB is equal to CD. So by definition, if we have any two integers, if M to A is greater than N to B, then M to C would also be greater than N to D. Now, since M, A, is equal to m, and b is equal to n, so on and so forth. What we have is if m is greater than n, g is greater than k. But we've drawn our lines such that g is greater than k. So if g is greater than k, that also means that m is greater than n. So now we have this condition we know to be true. m is greater than n. Well, M is MA, N is NB, H is ME, and L is NF. 
So we have MA is greater than NB, ME is less than NF. Now these two conditions, according to the definition 7, if we have these two conditions, it means that the ratio of A to B is greater than E to F. So ultimately, long-winded, if A to B is equal to C to D, and C to D is greater than E to F, A to B is also greater than E to F. And that concludes this video presentation. To see the next presentation, just click the next button.